It's a beautiful day to be at Farpoint Toys. It's a toy show. Sorry, my allergies are acting up if you can hear it in my voice, but we're here to check out some toys. Welcome to Peg Warmers. I'm Kevin, and I'm here to talk about toys. I recently had a chance to attend It's a Toy Show at Farpoint Toys and Collectibles, and it is an annual free to vend, free to attend toy show. Always a good time. Uh, if you're a longtime viewer of the channel, you've seen previous videos of me attending It's a Toy Show, as well as videos featuring Justin and Penelope, the people that own Farpoint Toys. I got to Farpoint around 9.30 in the morning, about a half hour after the show opened officially, and the weather was beautiful. It was a great day. My allergies were acting up a little bit, uh, but luckily, there's very little video from that day of me talking, because here's where the episode is filmed now, you know, a week or so later. I didn't count exactly how many pop-up tents and tables there were, but there was between 50 and 60 vendors on the premises of Farpoint, as well as the Farpoint store itself. Vendors ranged from vintage toys to modern toys, career vendors to people that were just kind of thinning out their collection. There were some craftspeople there, uh, so quite a range of items. I got to give a shout out to my Patreon supporter, Joshua, who was there. He got a really big pickup for his collection. I'm going to share it here because he posted it on the Discord channel, which is for the second tier Patreon supporters. He picked up a vintage Horde Trooper for his collection. He has an almost complete American release Masters Universe collection, with the majority of the figures being from his childhood collection. Um, the Horde Trooper is one of the ones he needed, and now I think he's down to just the tops. I need those tops too. While walking around, I got spotted by G.I. Joe Repair Shop. If you haven't seen his Twitter feed, G.I. Joe Collector from the local area, goes to a lot of the local shows, shows off him slowly building his collection by fixing things and piecing things together. I got the chance to meet G.I. Joe Repair Shop once. I didn't even see him at It's Toy Show, but he saw me actually talking to one of the Farpoint VIPs, Mark. And Mark and his wife, I've met a couple times at Farpoint, and I gotta thank Mark for sure, because he actually brought me a gift. He remembered in an episode I talked about having a broken Starcom figure. Uh, there's an episode where I talk about moving, and some of the stuff that got damaged. I actually had a box fall off my truck one time I was moving, and I lost some vintage toys. Uh, but that was when I moved to this house. Uh, when I moved to my previous house from my parents' house, one of my Starcom guys broke. So he actually brought me a complete Starcom figure to replace that guy, which is awesome. I love this bright yellow suit and the backpack and the hose and the little blaster and the visor and everything. This figure is amazing. So thank you, Mark. So one of the vendors that I love running into at shows like this is Chris from Muppet Stuff. If you haven't seen the Muppets episode of Peg Warmers, you gotta check it out. It's one of the most popular episodes we've done. And my favorite item for sale at his booth was the Little People Sesame Street playset. I had this as a kid. I have very vivid memories of it. We actually took some of the little minifigures to the Bahamas when I was a little kid. My dad was actually working out of the country. And we lived in the Bahamas for about three months. And a couple of the minifigures got washed away um, in the, the waves. I played with them in the sand, and I lost Big Bird and Cookie Monster. Uh, somehow I hung on to Ernie and Bert and Mr. Hooper. Uh, um, but I, I had so much fun with that set and really vividly remember the, the house portion of it. It's been updated a few times over the years. They've done multiple releases in slightly different styles, but I love that vintage one. Do you guys remember Jace and the Wheeled Warriors? It was a line of vehicles that had some interchangeability. There were good guys and bad guys. There were little tiny human figures in the good guys and these little, like, alien brain things in the bad guy vehicles. The cartoon show had much more personality to the characters uh, huh, than the toy line. The toy line just focused on the vehicles. But there's a playset for that, and I actually saw two of them. I got footage of one, but there were two of these at It's a Toy Show, and Jason of World Warriors is not a really common line to find. So I was kind of blown away by that. 
One of my favorite things, I already mentioned Josh and Mark and G.I. Joe Repair Shop, but I love hanging out with my toy friends when I go to toy shows. Some of my vendor buddies were here. Like, of course, Justin and Penelope were there. Uh, my buddy Chris Lamont, Ed Rents was there. And Rose and Tony from RetroCon. I met up with them. We actually, you know, walked around the place and went and hung out um, after checking out the show. Uh, love getting a chance to spend time with my collecting family. While I was walking around, I saw this cool custom painted gray skull. I thought it was pretty neat. I've seen some of this particular vendor's work before. He has these like doll houses painted up as haunted mansions every year. And I thought this custom gray skull looked pretty great. Oh, this one table had so much vintage Star Wars stuff. I really was checking it out. I looked over this Death Star playset that he had so many times. I, as I mentioned before, I had that box of stuff fall off the back of my truck while I was moving, and the elevator to my Death Star playset broke. I still have the tower piece, but the elevator itself doesn't stay, and I was contemplating buying this uh, Death Star playset because it wasn't outrageous, but it wasn't complete, and I'm obviously going to end up with an incomplete one if I buy one and steal the tower, and I went back and forth. I ultimately didn't. I'm hoping to someday just be able to find a connection, somebody who has a tub of parts and be able to just buy the elevator shaft and not have to worry about buying the decks, the floors. But I do also have a broken turret gun, the blue gun at the top. And that's really kind of why I was thinking about buying the whole thing to, to finally, you know, replace that as well as the elevator that's now broken. So I, I maybe should have done it, but I just didn't jump on it. <laughs> but he had a lot of really great stuff, including... Um, the Millennium Falcon and the Dewback and some of the Hoth play sets and stuff like that. Of course, with any toy show, there was a ton of bins to dig through. Lots of vintage Motu and G.I. Joe. Some really great stuff. Couple parts bins. Gotta love the parts bins. I know I've looked at this bootleg lion -O and Snarf before. They're like Mexican bootlegs. One of the vendors had them. I think I saw them... Maybe at Toy Dome or some other show I've been to recently. But I can never get enough looking at these guys. And I, I, I didn't ask on the price. Mexican bootlegs generally are, are more than I'm willing to spend. But I do like looking at the weirdo stuff like that. Oh my goodness. It's the Laser Tag Academy Star Helmet. This is the Build Your Own Toy Galaxy logo starter kit. All you got to do is supply your own skull. So one of the guys that had a bunch of G.I. Joe, like, shells and a box of parts and stuff like that had several Mighty Max play sets. They were actually very popular while I was at his booth. I saw several of them sell. Um, Mighty Max play sets are really big right now. Um, Pixel Dan and Edge Retro Geek Out, a couple of these other toy channels have been focusing a lot on mini play sets lately, and I think it's really getting people uh, jazzed up for those kind of sets. The guy who was running the booth came over while I was filming the clip and asked me if I was filming because of his Faz Jafar. A, hey. <laughs> I didn't have the heart to tell him. I only cared about the Mighty Max. But it was funny once he pointed it out. A, hey. I have a pretty big collection of vintage cake pans. Uh, they hung in the kitchen at my old house, and they hang in the kitchen at my new house. I've never seen this Wonder Woman cake pan before. Very beautiful box here. Um, I didn't open it and ask to see the cake pan inside, but I've never seen that one before. It just kind of sparked my interest. I don't think I'm really in the market for more cake pans. Uh, the space in my kitchen's pretty much full. I've always wanted the C-3PO one and also kind of the Power Ranger one, and I'd have a hard time passing up on the Mario one, I think. Those are probably my top three ones I still would kind of like, but I'm kind of done because of space. Uh, if I got one of those, I might have to get rid of one of my two Ninja Turtle cake pans just to represent more brands. I had to chuckle when I saw this hockey set. I mean, I remember Wayne Gretzky being a big name. I mean, he's the great one, right? Michael Jordan, Bo Jackson, Wayne Gretzky. You know, these guys were pop culture. They were beyond sports. But my favorite thing about this Wayne Gretzky hockey table was the Made with Pride in Canada label. And of course, no visit to Farpoint Toys would be complete without going inside Farpoint Collectibles and Museum. 
always fun to get to see inside. Someday I'm going to do a full, like, Farpoint tour video. So I didn't show off a whole lot here, plus the store was busy. I didn't want to interfere with their business on this event day by, like, being in the way too much. But I did shoot this one case. Uh, it's kind of behind right where they do Barter Town and where we shot the Night Force episode. But it's like one of the main museum cases that has so many amazing toys in it. Uh, if you are in the New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland area, it is worth the trip to check out Farpoint Toys sometime. Let's check out some of my haul from Farpoint. I picked up my first ever small soldier figure. This cheapy knockoff Jeep cracked me up. Uh, I was willing to pay the two bucks for it, they were asking, because of how many details it has on it that look like things from the Vamp. It's got the little gun from the Vamp there on the hood. It's got the little bedroll from the Mark II. Even on the back here, these, like, vents and the little loop where the where you would plug in the missile launcher or the uh, laser gun. Like, it, it just has so many little Vamp details to it that I think are... Kind of funky, that was the reason I uh, picked it up. I don't really collect the reaction TMNT figures, but Mondo Gecko is one of my faves, and he was half the retail price tag, so uh, I snapped him up. Picked up a couple of bootleggish G.I. Joe accessories. Uh, I believe these came with bronze bomber figures, and those are kind of hard to come by, so... Felt like these were worth the buck a piece to pick them up. We've got the Darklon Blaster here in white and the Televiper communication device in brown. I did grab two G.I. Joe figures. These are 2000s-ish era. Got the 2001 Flint. This is the Eco Warriors Flint in desert colors. He came with the Desert Striker Jeep. Uh, I would like to find a Eco Warrior helmet possibly to paint up to go with him to make a, a sort of a complete look. Yo, Joe. And I have the 2002 Dial Tone. He came with either a vehicle, an All Striker variant, or in the BJ's Wholesale Club exclusive pack that was a, a multi pack of figures. So both of these were kind of cool to pick up. I can practically feel its semiconductors singing under my fingertips. Justin was giving me a hard time. This is the second year in a row that I picked up this Ninja Turtle motorcycle at Farpoint. Um, my buddy Chris Lamont was selling this one. Uh, it is mostly complete. It is more complete than the other one I had. It has the missiles. It has the Ninja Stars. Uh, when you open it up inside here, it does have this camera and this camera and this satellite dish. So I believe it's missing like one item, maybe like a, a tape recorder or a microphone or something like that. Uh, but I'm getting closer to having a complete one of these. And uh, it is kind of ironic to buy the same vintage toy two years in a row at the same toy show. After Farpoint, Rose and Tony and I headed down the road to Shoreline Vintage. This is like an antique mall, like a little building. They have different booths within it, basically. You know, there's one checkout point for all these different booths. It's kind of crowded in there. Uh, there's a lot of different things, uh, but they are hosting a show the same day as it's a toy show. And uh, they had about 100 vendors outside in a pretty big space in the backyard of this building. I felt like there was a ton of vintage stuff at this place, which was great. I mean, that's really some of my favorite stuff to look for when I'm out hunting uh, at a toy show. I saw this Batman ride on and uh, I know we had already filmed the Batman Returns episode and I almost stuck this clip into that episode because Tony mentioned, uh, when I mentioned that they should have made a little um, grotesque version of the Batmobile for the Penguin to ride in. Um, he mentioned that there was like a pedal car toy that you could put on a spring. Uh, obviously, that'd be more for role play than, uh, you know, a thing for your action figure. But anyway, I saw this there. It's a very cool ride on. Uh, massive, massive item if you're a Batman collector to, to put in your collection. I saw the Kenner Proton Pack at Vintage Shoreline. 
And it's a very nostalgic thing for me. I had it as a kid. I actually dressed up as a Ghostbuster for Halloween one year, wearing it with a gray sweatshirt and gray sweatpants, a little armband it comes with. I try not to collect too much roleplay stuff nowadays. I mean, I have some, but it's hard to display a lot of the roleplay stuff. So I don't currently have it in my collection, but I, I had to squeeze the trigger. Uh, and I go back and forth on getting one sometime. If it had the PKE meter with it, it might have been a different story. I might have had a hard time resisting. Once we were all hot and sweaty from being outside, uh, we went inside the store and, and did a, a, a better once through there. Saw some cool things inside. Uh, the Power Ranger Power Cycle, if you've never seen my episode, I did it with Farpoint on um, Power Wheels and Big Wheels. Um, the Power Cycles and Big Wheels. This is a cool one. Definitely a cool one. Not one I think, I don't think we mentioned the Power Rangers Power Cycle in that episode. Saw a bunch of small soldiers. I guess I was on a small soldier kick that day. Chip Hazard and Archer and some of the other guys, uh, as well as some Toxic Crusaders. Just love these, you know, really crazy 90s toys. I forget how big Pyramidus is every time uh, I see it. I am shocked. I wasn't really collecting Power Rangers at all during Power Rangers Zeo. I wasn't really even paying attention to it. I didn't have cousins playing with it at the time. So Pyramidus just blows me away every time I see it. Magnum P.I. What a weird toy. There's a bunch of 80s things like uh, Magnum P.I. and MacGyver and the A-Team. And they had toys, some of them much rarer than others. Um, they all had like a signature vehicle in the line as well as some three and three quarter inch figures. And the Magnum P.I. set is fantastic. Uh, very rare. Uh, definitely worth the... Well, I assume worth. I never really looked it up. The the big price tag they had on it. But man, I love seeing those three and three quarter inch style Joe figures uh, based on TV show characters with the with their signature vehicles. Super cool. So, what did I pick up? I picked up a Robotech figure. I do not have very many of the Robotech figures, but I do really like them. Uh, they have some great detailing to them and great paintwork. Robotech. And this guy had his helmet, so. Couldn't leave him behind. I picked up Sweet Bee, a complete Sweet Bee. This one vendor had quite a few Princess of Power figures, and I was debating who I needed a, a more complete version of. I have most of the common Princess of Power figures. I don't have Spinarella or Natasa, uh, but I didn't think I had Sweet Bee's headset um, and maybe even not her wings. So. I picked this one up. I hope when I finally dig out my Princess of Power figures, I'm not kicking myself for rebuying somebody I already had in great shape. I bought a whole bag of Mega Marines molds as well as one Play-Doh can or moldable bio armor. A little bit of dried out Play-Doh in there. Mm, just a few crumbs. I don't know which uh, character gets this container without looking it up, but these containers are actually hard to come by, and I just kind of couldn't pass it up, so maybe I can complete some Mega Marines. And the last thing I picked up at Vintage Shoreline is three packs of trading cards from the G.I. Joe trading card series. So I'm going to open these up and see if there's any cards in here. I'm actually only missing one card, and I don't remember which one it is, uh, but I'll open these, and then when I find my pack of these i have like a whole actually i have a sealed i have a sealed case of these uh that i'll never open uh that got super cheap but i have an all but one card complete set um and so i'll open these and put them aside and when i find that i'll go through it and see if i find that one card i'm missing three packs of gi joe cards let's open them up see what we got Breaker, Night Viper, Low Light. Josh, you need this one if you're watching. I'll set it aside. Pretty sure I have him. Zartan. I love these honor roll cards to remember characters that died in the comics. 
Was he buried on the freighter? Turns out he was still alive later. Flint in his eco-warrior suit. Ambush. Special mission. Big Ben. Another issue of the comics. One of the the one I'm missing is one of the, like the issues of the comics or something that's hard to remember uh, what card it is because it's not just like a character or vehicle. The Rolling Thunder, Roadblock, and Major Altitude Battlecopter Pilot. Oh yeah. Wetsuit, one of the first ones I ever got. Bazooka, Zap. Wow, it's like the same. It's like these packs repeat. I've had this pack before. Like this is a pack I got as a kid one time. Wetsuit, Bazooka, Zap, Target, the Badger, Serpentor, Cesspool, Charboil, Special Mission One, Incinerator, another comic one, and the Sky Striker. Well, maybe not the whole pack. Some of these cards towards the back aren't as familiar, but man, these first couple. I had all of these as a kid, and I'm pretty sure they came out of the same pack. That's kind of funny. All right, last pack. I know it's a little anticlimactic that I don't know which one I need. But I still thought it was fun to check them out, in case you guys haven't seen these before. Another one of the comic issues, the Hydrofoil. Firefly. Heavy Duty. Special Mission. The Checklist. The 1991 Checklist 2. How. G.I. Joe number 1. Quick Kick. Wetsuit. Bazooka. Zap. See what I mean about how these cards, like, they come together? Weird. It's a little weird. Thanks for tuning in and checking out this episode. Do me a favor and hit that like button. If you have the means to support the channel and want to join us over on Patreon for some bonus content and additional behind-the-scenes type things once in a while, as well as maybe the Discord, uh, that's greatly appreciated. You know what helps the channel, though, and doesn't cost you anything? Sharing this video with a toy-collecting friend. Thanks for hanging on the peg with me.